Welcome to the DCC Museum. Hi, and welcome back at the museum. Today we're visiting beautiful Leeuwarden, Friesland in the Netherlands, and we're visiting Jorn Simonsma. You all know Jorn from the documentary. He was the early adapter, and he is going to share with us his interesting visions on how he records vinyl onto DCC and why, in his opinion, this is the best way to go. Hello everybody, welcome here. I want to uh, share some experience uh, with you and I will do that in three steps. I will want to show you uh, my recording history. I want to show you how I experience music in, in general and how I personally believe that DCC is probably the best way to record your final one. And I will show you in, in the third part my results. When I started my, 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 uh, my, my DCC uh, in 1993, I started of course collecting, recording, re-recording because my budget was not that high. Because I bought first uh, probably six or ten DCCs and I used them, recorded, re-recorded. Uh, but in time I kept all my DCCs and at a certain moment I tried to index them. And I believe this is my first one number one and I overdubbed it many many times and uh, I will show you a couple of my uh, DCC's in, in time one of my uh, yeah, my second number is Ace of Base and, and you can see that I used it many many times but the filth is quite bad but it still works I will go through uh, more of them in, in, in time and uh, this is a Chris Isaac one and, and this one is from 1994 so and I'll get a next one to show you a little bit about the timeline and here is Ramasati 97 because in the early years I recorded uh, a lot 99 Fleetwood Mac and it's 48 already And uh, during this period, period, I recorded a lot from CD, but at a certain moment, and there was a DVD audio coming and a Blu-ray, and uh, Blu-ray uh, was for me that I don't have to put every time my TV on to 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 listen to the music, so that was a quite good solution, and uh, that was around number 80, and I started in 2013 with recording on Blu-ray, and it was, yeah easy access for me. We sit now here uh, on my bedroom where we have a balcony and I can easily listen to the music without having a TV over here. So that helps a lot to enjoy easily my music. And after uh, Blu-ray and, and DVD audio I discovered that, that yeah, maybe I can record from uh, records as well. So I started with uh, the Prodigy because I had a lot of 12 inches from the Prodigy. And I thought, well, let's make a mixtape of it, and I do all the B-sides. But I, I recorded it, and not directly I re-listened it, but after a while I put it on here in, in my bedroom, and I was really amazed about the quality, and I thought, why is, is, is it so good, and um, am I surprised as well? And because I, I am now eh, a couple of years involved at the DCC Museum, you get more details of, of the system, and perhaps maybe a PASC system has influence on that. Welcome to the test setup. What we have here is uh, we have a record player, we have a DCC recorder, we have a special record that uh, in this case is quite handy, I will explain it later. We have some measurements devices and, and the reason that we set it up like this is technically I would like to prove my hearing experience and I couldn't do it by myself so I have a lot of input from Tom Sandbergen who, who provided uh, this measurements tool that we can show it on, on the computer and that we can compare it. Uh, what, what I would like to show you is uh, yeah, how we came to this and in, in, in the, as, as for example, Geits explained in his presentation last June, there are, there are a lot of uh, theories about uh, the, the PASC and I will go uh, in, in some steps how it 
should work and what happens. Uh, this document is in Dutch, we don't have it in English, but what you can see is it's the frequency of the human ear. Uh, you have a human threshold, what you can hear, for example, at, at 20 Hz, you, you cannot hear sounds lower than 60 dB. And what in theory uh, it is, is if you, you cannot hear it, then you can leave it out. So you don't need the storage uh, for, for the, those low level, low frequencies. And in the high frequencies, it, it's the same. What happened in, uh, to manage that, they created 32 subbands. So each frequency area has its own uh, subband. And so the, the, the system will see if a certain frequency is in that side and then the system knows how to store it. Uh, that's one part of, of, of the uh, storage saving uh, solution that is in the PASC system, but maybe what's a little bit more interesting is, is for example, your hearing is working like your eyes and if you have a flashlight in your eye, a certain moment uh, you don't see anything well because of the flashlight. Your hair is a little bit the same, so if you have in certain, like say in, in one of the subbands, a sound that's quite loud and you get a, a second sound that is uh, less louder, then you don't hear it. So that's what they call uh, masking. And in, in, in this theory, you, you have a certain way you have masking in time, so you have higher sounds and lower sounds and because of the difference it's, it's masking away but also forward and backward masking. For example, I have a record and I have a lot of sound and then it's quiet, then you can probably see the backward masking. That's the reason that I, I tried this one and it is uh, from play from David Grohl, it's drums and after the drums there is a certain silence. Yeah, can we see then the masking? As you probably know, uh, one of the downsides of, of a record is that you have groove noise, uh, and of course you don't want to hear it, but it, uh, it is there. And uh, groove noise is something that is in the low frequency. So if you look at the diagram in the PASC system, it will be in the low frequency, so possibly. Uh, this groove noise can disappear if you have a higher sound. But first in our measurements we said yeah then we have to record first the groove noise and this is one of the results that we made when you put the needle on the record you see a, a, a big peak of course and then you see all all low fre frequencies in time and that, that is the groove noise. And we saw if we record that on, 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 on a DCC, it stays the same. But partly that explains the PASC system because you record only the groove noise. There is no second sound or bigger sound available, so it, it records what it is over there. Because of copyright protection, we can only sample a little bit of this album that has a great dynamic range for testing. As, as you've seen uh, that we did uh, the recording on the, on the, uh, from the record and we did it from the DCC and now we have uh, zoomed in on the music and we have uh, results. And uh, on the top level we have the, the record and on the bottom level we have the, the uh, sound wave of the DCC recording. Uh, as we mentioned before, on the record you have groove noise. You still see after the music that there is still groove noise. And when we recorded only the groove noise at the DCC recording you, you still saw it. But now, after the music, on the DCC, the groove noise is, is flattened out. Uh, with this uh, results, it, it explains to me 
why the recording on, on DCC is, is, is that great. And that my personal experience of listening to DCC uh, after this recording uh, makes me quite happy. I see it here, the results. After this interesting day, Johan showed us his ITTS box. He is one of the three people that we know in the world next to the Philips Historical Product Museum and the DCC Museum who actually owns one. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.